Um, you can have bar magnets, permanent magnets that attract metals. And you can also generate a magnet, not by using a permanent bar magnet, but using a coil of wire. So moving charges create magnetic fields. And this is exactly how the magnetic field is set up in the earth and also the sun. Um, there's a coil of wire and there's electrical charges, electrons moving through that wire. And as they do that, they produce a magnetic field that has a shape with kind of two lobes. And it's the exact same shape as a barred magnets electric or magnetic field. So what that actually looks like is kind of this, you know, two lobe structure where magnetic field lines come out of the northern hemisphere of the magnet and go into the southern hemisphere. And so if you were going to take a compass and map out the uh, direction that the magnetic field points around a bar magnet, then you'd get this two lobed shape and you would get the same pattern from a solenoid of um, electric current. But how does that actually establish itself in a planet or in the star, our sun? Um, in this case, it's a magnetic dynamo. So instead of having um, moving charges set up by an electric current that we apply with a battery, there's still um, moving electric charges that are set up and that's driven by convection within the planet's interior and within the sun's interior. So just like that, um, the kind of coiled wire in the solenoid, the same uh, pattern gets set up by charges that are, are just the moving metallic fluid that's being driven around by convection. So in the earth, this happens in our outer core where it's made of molten metal that's being moved around by heat from the inner core driving convection. And that moves electric charges and that produces the magnetic field. Um, this in the sun happens in the convection layer of the sun. And so you get this kind of same magnetic field pattern for all of the planets and for the sun. Um, but for the sun, there's a little bit of a, uh, another complication happening in its magnetic field. And this is because of the differential rotation. So the same magnetic field pattern with the two lobes gets set up on the sun. But then since it's differentially rotating, it's moving faster at the equator and this drags the magnetic field of the sun out until it gets so far um, disorganized that it um, twists and kinks and breaks apart. And so the sun's magnetic field suddenly reorganizes every approximately 11 years. And this is associated with the patterns of sunspots that we see, the numbers of sunspots that we see over time and with the uh, severity of solar activity. All right, so here's a little video of that twisting process kind of an old animation, but I think it illustrates the point. Plus I kind of like the colors. So if we start with a normal magnetic field, differential rotation stretches it out and eventually it becomes so disorganized that it uh, breaks apart and catastrophically reorganizes. This happens every 11 years. All right. And the same process is why we often see sunspots in pairs because if we play this video, we're gonna see that the uh, magnetic field lines that emerge from two sunspots tend to connect them. And this is generated when the magnetic field as it reorganizes penetrates the photosphere surface and the regions of very strong magnetic field prevent hot material from flowing into the region of the sunspot. So this is actually why the sunspots are cool because those strong magnetic field lines keep uh, the hot material out. All right, so the solar cycle, since the entire magnetic field reorganizes every 11 years, when it does that, it typically flips polarity. So the North Pole of the sun is not always the North magnetic pole of the sun. It flips every 11 years. Um, the same flipping process happens on Earth, but a lot slower. And when this happens, then the sunspots, um, since they occur in pairs, one of them tends to be a North pole, which I guess is the blue dot. And one of them tends to be a south magnetic pole, which is the red dot. And so those will flip every 11 years. So the sunspot polarity that we measure is different in say year zero of the solar cycle and year 11. So the blue and the red dots are now oppositely polarized because the entire sun's magnetic field is in the opposite polarity. And how might we measure magnetic field? Well, it turns out that we can use spectroscopy for this. So if we have a um, 
an absorption line, in the presence of a strong magnetic field, the, a single absorption line will split slightly. And in the presence of a stronger magnetic field, it'll split even more. This is called the Zeeman effect. It's a quantum effect. And it's the way that we can actually measure magnetic field strength and magnetic field polarity of sunspots. So spectroscopy, even more useful than you once believed. <laughs>